All right, let's uh, make sure everybody's here before we get started. Uh, let's go ahead and get this done here. And then let me make sure Facebook is good. All right, I believe we should be good to go. Let's make sure though. Let us make sure. All right. And I believe we should be all right. All right, y'all. Welcome to the BCV podcast. I am your host, Pastor Seiko Woods. And please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell at the bottom of this video. That way, whenever I go live, post any content, you'll be one of the first to also view it. Uh, also, if you like to support the ministry financially, you can do that as well uh, through the uh, donation information at the bottom of this video. Uh, definitely appreciate your uh, support in that regard. Uh, as you can see, there's a new feature, um, a new format. I may explain that later on. Those who know, you know. Those who don't, you'll get it later on. Uh, but just need your help in making sure that those who would like to uh jump in this conversation if you can share this tag a friend uh tag someone that may want to be a part of this conversation as well you have some information i want to uh lay before you all uh make sure let me see facebook family should be here um because i have it already here i can see a few people uh youtube family welcome proverbs was going on my brother vigilant excellent excellent video uh sister those of you who are uh, watching this live or will watch this stream later on, please go to uh, Apostasy uh, Files. Please go there to their website. Vision, put your website up, please, as well. That way people can go there and check out that, that awesome video that you did earlier this afternoon on Marcus Rogers. Uh, excellent work. Excellent, excellent, excellent work. Uh, so that way we can get the word out for people to... Um, be aware of, of Marcus Rogers, who is definitely a heretic. I don't know why people don't want to call him that. Those who have platforms like Ruslan don't want to call him a heretic, don't want to call him a false teacher. Uh, but he, he definitely is that. And I have no problem uh, calling him such because that is what he is. And those who support him need to be uh, need to be avoided as well. But anyway, um, just want to uh, make sure that everyone is able to 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 jump in on this live, making sure that the settings are is OK uh, here before we get started. And um, yeah, so uh, love by God. Welcome. How you doing, sister? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, maybe a little small crowd tonight because I had to change uh, the the uh, the platform um, uh, from from what I would usually stream on. Uh, but, you know, hey, try to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves uh, in that regard. So I want to just lay out a couple of things, of course, as you know, a few housekeeping uh, rules and making sure that everybody is on the same page here. And um, before we get started, let me get that. Here we go. Copyright disclaimer under Title 17 USC Section 107 allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. And of course, the BCV podcast hosted by yours truly, Seiko Woods, is a ministry which strives to address issues, spiritual, social, psychological, etc from a biblical perspective and worldview using the word of God, that is book, chapter and verse as the final authority for faith, life and practice. That is Romans chapter 14, verse 5b and verses 22. I mean, uh, Romans, no, that's the other one. <laughs> Hebrews, uh, for Psalm 19, verses 7 through 11 and Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Warning and disclaimer. My content to some. My content to some may be deemed and perceived as offensive, harsh, mean, divisive, repulsive, sinful, and even anathema to some. 
To others like yourself, thank you so much. It is not. Therefore, it is your responsibility to be convinced in your own mind whether you can in good conscience continue to view, engage, participate, consume, imbibe, support, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Romans chapter 14, verse 5b and verses 22 to 23. It is also the responsibility of you, the viewer, to comport and govern yourselves accordingly, not mine. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse ten. Uh, don't be hating, brother. Don't be hating. Don't be hating. I'm always gonna. I'm always gonna have. I'm always gonna have my my, my jersey on, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Number twenty. Y'all know who he is. Barry. And not Obama either. Mr. Sanders, one of the one of the best backs in the league. But anyway, um, Facebook family, I'm not sure if you're there. If you're there, uh, let me see you. Make sure that I don't want people to to be missing on this information. YouTube family, thank you so much for joining. All right, Kevin, there you go, my brother. And uh, if you want to chime in, you feel free to chime in once I finish the stream. Um, but I got some information I want to, I want to present. And, uh, as you can see the thumbnail, uh, of, of, uh, Candace Owens and, and Kanye with the white lives matter, uh, shirts on, of course, I already know people have said, yeah, they did this to, you know, to, to poke, uh, fun and to mock the left and all this stuff. And, you know, okay, got it. I, I, and I understand that. I'm coming from I'm going to be coming from a different perspective. I'm going to come from a biblical perspective, of course, but I, I want to come from a perspective that I don't believe a lot of you either have considered or either you are ignoring regarding this whole situation. And, and for me, I believe as Christians, we're called to a, a different level. We're called we're called to a higher standard we're called to a different way of relating uh before the world yes mocking and things like that has its place but my 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 goal my agenda hopefully tonight and you'll hear the spirit behind what i'm trying to convey um i don't believe it was a good look i don't believe it was a good look at all um and, and i'm going to explain i'm going to explain why and, and I already know, and I've read the comments, I've, I've read the posts, I've, I've read people uh, asking me, uh, do I hate Candace Owens? And, and I find that rather rather interesting and somewhat comical anytime uh, someone who, like myself, embraces conservative values, embraces, most importantly, a biblical worldview, which bleeds out into my into my into my political view which is conservatism i'm a conservative I, I do not believe that the government needs to have its business and everything that i do i believe in limited and small government i believe in the the rights and the privileges that are afforded to us in the constitution the bill of rights all of that all of that um i believe that every human being has a right to live i do not believe that the government is supposed to be our daddy I do not believe that the government should be the source of our support and taking care of us. The government has only one job, according to Romans chapter 13, one job. You got one job, government, and that is to protect its citizens, to protect the innocent and punish the guilty. That is it. And we know they came and get that right. But I find it rather interesting anytime people like myself say anything in public disagreement regarding conservatives, i.e. Candace Owens, it could be Trump, it doesn't matter. These same people, these same people will question whether or not you yourself are, are on the same team. And I'm like, I'm on I'm on God's side. I'm I'm not I'm not about I'm not about you know, political 
partisanship when it comes to whether or not I'm going to be loyal to Republicans, regardless of what they do. No, 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 no. My loyalty is to the kingdom of God. That's that's where my loyalty lies. My, my loyalty lies in the bloodstained banner of the cross. My loyalty lies with God's elect. My loyalty lies with the bride of Christ. My loyalty lies with the church who Christ gave his life for. That's where my loyalty lies. Period. Anything else is a distant second. You 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 rocking with the savior, then I can rock with you. But you own some other stuff talking about anything that is contrary to scripture or think that because you're a conservative, you can be a clown. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. And that that's that's where I am. Now, um, again, I'm I'm just amazed that that there are people when I put up the comment <laughs> yesterday about uh dear Kanye and dear Candace all lives matter and people like yeah they know that okay well then that i believe that's what they should have wore I, I believe that if i'm going to piss people off i'm going to piss people off with the truth i don't want to piss people off with a different narrative that's just as that's just as uh offensive as the counter narrative black lives matter because i know as a christian all lives matter because all lives are created in the Imago Day. Now, I understand what Kanye did, but I do not agree that that was a good look for Kanye. And I'm going to explain to you why. I'm going to explain to you why. And he, so let me just go ahead and give you the cheat, the cheat notes and the cheat codes. Here's why I say it's not, it was not a good look for Kanye to do what he did, especially alongside Candace Owens. Here's the reason why. Because most black folk don't care for Candace. Now, I am not saying, I am not saying that Candace does not say things that are truthful. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Yes, she does make some truthful points. Yes, and yes, she does connect with a certain people group, but mainly it's white folk. I'm just and listen, and if we and if we can't have a conversation about this, then that shows our lack of consideration and receptivity to others who may differ with us. And that is not to say, listen, that is not to say that Candace does not have a place. No, she does. But her place is not everybody's place. Do y'all are y'all understand what I'm saying? In other words, Candace is not the end all be all for black folk. Candace is not the end all be all for re re Republicans or black conservatives. She's not. And, the, and there's this there's this unspoken code within conservatism. Within the Republican Party, that as long as a person is Republican and as long as I like them, I better not say anything about them if they cut a fool, if they do things out of character, out of pocket, because, you know, we're trying to get we're trying to get black people off the Democrat plantation. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm a Christian. So your your sinful means does not justify righteous ends. It, it, it doesn't now. They can do what they want. I understand that. But our choices have consequences. And here's the reason why I'm saying it's not a good look. Here's why I'm saying it's not a good look. Because we know as black folk, Candace does not does not fare well with 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 modern with the average black person. I mean, you go to the barbershop, you 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 hang around in, in family functions. You talk about Candace Owens, you, you already know it's gonna be some words gonna be said about this woman. Now, again, this does not mean that what she says is not is not on point. Some of the things she does say is on point, but it's the, the it's the style, it's the delivery. And I believe that's just me based on my observation. I believe Candace loves poking the black bear. What's the black bear? The black bear is the black community. Why poke the black bear unnecessarily? If you're trying to win them and bring them into your into your forest. 
Why, why antagonize? Why, why make these statements that you know or the timing of your statements, i.e. George Floyd? Oh, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about how what the Bible says about a timely word. It's not just words that God deals with. It's the timing of our words that he deals with as well, too. You, you ever heard somebody say something and you know it wasn't the right time for them to say it, even though what they said was true? But it wasn't the right time. Solomon said, like apples of gold and settings of silver, so is a timely word spoken in right circumstances. Come on now. So I can say the right thing, but it could be the wrong time to say it. And we act as though it don't matter because, hey, we're we're conservatives. So, so we, we, we get a pass on saying things that we know doesn't instill or foster respect for dialogue. It just fans and fuels the flames of division and animus and antagonism within the black community. And then we wonder why people like Candace is not well received. Well, because she's kind of set herself up like that. You don't see Candace going to the hood. You don't see you don't see Candace when she was doing black sit going to the hood. You didn't see Brandon Tatum and him doing that. Oh, I'm gonna go there, and I'm I'm gonna come back to, around to that point as well too. As she said, I'm wondering what should I do with a book? Read it, read it, read a book. Because because again, I'm not I'm not saying that you should that she should be canceled or you should throw her stuff away no 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 let every let every man be convinced in his own mind I, i'm do do what you want to do with her books with her with her podcast whatever the case might be i'm just saying we 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 have to be balanced and fair when we deal with people that are on our side because because that was some of the comments and statements that i read in my in my thread uh 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 like, aren't, aren't we on? Aren't we on the same team? Well, I'm on God's team. Candace Owens claims to be saved, but hey, the, the, the jury is, the jury ain't ain't back on that. The jury, I, hey, just saying. And, and if she is, oh, okay, whatever. But she needs to be discipled. Uh, her husband needs to re, to to, to rein her back a little bit. I'm just this just my observation and my opinion. It's my opinion. Y'all on my live, you're on my platform. I'm giving you my opinion. Deal with it. Okay. But I, I believe that if Kanye is trying to reach the black community, let me tell you something. Kanye, whether you like him or not, or you think he's a sellout, whatever the case might be, some people think he's an op, whatever. That's your opinion. That's fine. What I'm saying is this, if we're trying it, listen, if we're trying to help people, you don't help people by constantly haranguing them with insults. That's not how you're going to do it. And, and, and then you don't do it with a person or alongside a person who does not have a good rapport with the people that you're trying to bring in. See, if Kanye is trying to get the, uh, the 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 college dropouts, you know, if Kanye is trying to get his late registration folk, if Kanye is trying to get his graduation uh, folk, mm -hmm. if Kanye is trying to get his 808 and heartbreak folk, yeah, y'all 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 following where I'm going with this? Y'all y'all understand what I'm trying to say with this? Um, then you're not gonna you're not gonna get them. With 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 Candace, the the Bible talks about how we are to walk in wisdom. That that's that's what that's what we're we're called to do. We're, we're to be wise in how we walk. So that means that if I'm trying to win over a particular people group, if I'm trying to if I'm trying to get the hood dudes in. That I know that who I have alongside me, I need to, I need to be wise in who I who I tag myself with. 
Now, if you don't care, then understand. Then with that comes different outcomes. But there, but there are people in certain communities and in certain contexts that are not going to rock with Candace Owens. And you know what? That's okay. There are some people that would rock with Candace Owens. That's okay too. But listen, as black people, we're not a monolith. But the problem that I have with this situation here is that I did not see the benefit or the end game. What, what was the end game? To piss people off? Okay, well, mission accomplished on that. And yes, you had people thinking, okay, well, now this, now there, you know, why would you put on a White Lives Matter, you know, shirt? Well, if you saw the interview with, with Tucker Carlson, which I believe was a good interview, great interview, it, it, it was. I, I disagree with Kanye, you know, on the reason why he wore the shirt, but you know, he he laid out some some fire facts. He did, but I believe he tuned he tuned out the ears of black folk. Once they saw that. Because listen, if my if 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 I have an opportunity to get your attention, then how I present the information to you is going to matter. It just is. I mean, and, and listen, and we're all like that. If I if I'm going to if I'm going to do business with you, then how I present myself, how I dress, how I carry myself, what I wear, how I smell, all of those things are impressions that you will never forget. They always talk about first impressions or lasting impressions, right? Okay, so now if I know that I'm going to the hood or if I know that I'm going to be around people whose political views are already antithetical to mine, then I need to make sure that if I'm going, if I'm going to shoot, I need to make sure that I hit the target. And I don't believe that that did this. I believe that this created more confusion. I believe that this created further issues and problems. And again, and I and like I said before, and I say it again, and Candace wonders why black people don't like her. And I'm just talking about as a whole. I'm not talking about every single person, but I, but but y'all know. I mean, come on. Let me ask you all this question: How many of you watched the revolt, the revolt conference that that uh that she attended? I believe was it in 2020 or 2019? Um, remember when her and Ti was going at it on stage? How many of y'all remember that? Put up a one or put up a yes if you remember watching that. Tina, you watched it, right? Okay. How many of how many of you uh, watched that 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 conference? It was Ti, Killer Mike, Candace Owens, a few other people there. Diddy was uh, hosting the conference. Um, Jay, will you remember that? Okay. All right. A few others did as well too. Now, let me let me ask you this question. Let me let me ask you this question. Let's, let's just keep it a buck. All right. Let's just keep it a buck. When you saw that conference, when you saw that conference. What was the difference from what Candace Owens said about the black community? Versus what Killer Mike said. About the black community. Yeah, I thought it was excellent, too. I, 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 it, it was definitely good. It, it, it needed to happen. It definitely needed to happen. But. What was the difference from what Killer Mike said about the black community versus for what Candace Owens said? Remember when Candace Owens and T.I. was going at it and she wasn't she wasn't winning. She was making her points, but she wasn't getting the audience over to her side. Why? Because of perception, because of her attitude toward the black community. But Killer Mike said the same thing about the black community and they applauded him but she said the same thing killer mike said so what's the difference what's 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 the difference it, it, it the way it's the delivery it's the delivery and let me tell you something if you've already if you've already established a pattern of, of how you felt about black people or you you can't even connect or relate to your own people, then when you come among them, they're already looking at you a different way. Oh, 
it, they did see you said a girl even said that at the event okay so then i'm not lying jay will you said the approach and the delivery facts facts uh kevin you said and i'll just read this you said i really don't know why kanye wore the, the the white lives matter shirt when i mentioned the shirt mocked liberals it was an assumption so with that said if kanye who is a businessman who makes clothes hypothetically said while watching tv news he said while watching hispanic immigrants dying in the desert trying to get to america and was inspired support hispanics by making hispanic matter t-shirts and he showed up in a paris wearing that shirt in paris wearing that shirt would you have a problem with kanye uh no i wouldn't have a problem because it's the situation in the audience that sets the context and and and, and the way that that should be dealt with and handled because hispanics ain't the issue they're not the issue we, we're talking about how black people are responding to two people who they believe have sold out that's that's the issue now i believe and i and i would i feel that if they wore an all lives matter shirt that would convey a more poignant and positive and powerful statement because that is based upon scripture all lives matter because all lives are created in the image of god and i know based on tucker carlson's interview with kanye why kanye wore it because he said he said it's obvious that white lives matter look around got it but do you think tyrone and them and pookie and them at the barbershop you think ray ray and nene and them in the hood got that connection no so you lost them for the sake of what for the sake of what um you said she argues like it like a human resources attorney rather than a member of the community yeah yeah so so what i want to do is i i again i want to play some videos and then i i, I want to ask some questions okay and i i, I want us to have an honest conversation i want us to have an honest kind of conversation about some i believe some obvious things that we as conservatives don't want to talk about but other people are talking about it tina you said the girl said she agreed with candace on some points but didn't like her and she told her to her face see let, let, let me let me just ask this question amongst our, amongst us since we are family here since we are family do you believe that candace owens relates to the black community that she that she identifies with the black community do you believe that candace owens is able to relate to the black community just asking or do you think that kanye relates to the black community better than candace is not able, this is this is this is prior to the trump thing i think there's still some hope for, for kanye you know what i'm saying um with how he can you know deliver some things uh because you still got people you know in the hip-hop community and in the hood they still got love for this dude they think he's crazy i don't think he's crazy but if you had to choose between kanye and candace going into the hood which one would you choose let's be real which one would you choose and why and why you said she's not a part of our community okay she has no connection to the black community Okay, and Tina, you're not the only one saying that. And this is why we got to talk about this. We have to talk about this. So, so when, when I, when my white brothers and sisters start to question my conservatism and my conservative values because I'm disagreeing with Candace Owens, well, then you know what? That shows me where your loyalty lies, because I disagree with Candace on a few things. This ain't the first time, and this won't be probably won't be the last. I, I believe that she does have a place within the the party or within that movement but she is not the ultimate spokesperson for the black community let alone black conservatives she's not you say real quick yeah yeah he's like one of my uh, see you see what i'm saying um 
probably you said I think she relates, but we reject her because she is not boilerplate. I, I think I think Proverbs, what like what what Tina said, she she does not relate to the black to the black community or to the culture. Um, that's the, that's what I believe, and, and I believe it. I believe it based on based on receipts, and I'm going I'm going to pro, I'm going to provide that in a, in a minute. I'm going to provide that in a minute. Um, Dan, you said I question if you meant to have a Detroit Lions cover BCB. <laughs> You're going to back up off me, dude. You're going to back up off me. Um, Tina, you said you can't tell white people nothing about Candace Owens, just like you couldn't talk about Miss Jenkins on In Living Color. You just can't talk about Candace Owens. Hey, well, y'all saw how that was in the comments. Y'all saw how it was in the comments. And I, I'm just like, yo, can, can we not at least have a conversation about this? Because I'm just stating the facts. He says she is the white conservative's black mouthpiece. Well, can I ask another question before I drop some videos on y'all? Can I ask another question? Can I ask another question? If I can ask another question, put up a one in the, in the, in the chat. I want to make sure I have everybody's attention. Can I ask you another question? And this is this is this is a this is a uh, a thought provoking question. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. OK, thank you. Here's my question, ladies and gentlemen. Here's my question. All right. Um, Can anyone. Can anyone point to me. A candidate. That Candace Owens. Has supported has vocally supported or has publicly endorsed within the black conservative party can anyone do that can, can any of you can any of you tell me uh uh how many black folk have have candace owens publicly endorsed and supported since she since she's blown up that she's brought on her podcast that she brought on her you know on her platform and and that she's put out there i'm just asking and if you need some time i'll, I'll, I'll give you a minute I, I, i'll give you a minute i'll give you a minute okay just want to make sure if you have some time to think about it Any, anybody Anybody? Anybody? No, Larry Elder, he, he don't count. Here's the reason why he don't count. Larry Elder was already established. He 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 pretty much and, and plus that's her mentor. So he he does he he doesn't count. He he doesn't he doesn't count. We need to look into that one, uh Tina. We need to look into that one. Um yeah, we we're gonna talk about that too. We're gonna talk about that though too, Puny. We're gonna talk about that though too. And and and, and the reason why I ask that question is because I'm going somewhere with that as well too. Now let me just let me just go ahead and just and just um, put this out here. Uh, let me let me put the scriptures here, and let's lay a little foundation here out. All right, okay. Here's the reason why I believe. We need to be wise in how we and how we move and 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 who we're trying to connect with. Paul in First Corinthians chapter nine, um, verses nineteen and twenty-three, he's writing to the church of Corinth about his personal freedoms and things that he chose to give up for the sake of winning others over to Christ. Verse nineteen. First Corinthians 9. He says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all. And here's the reason why. Here's the purpose. Here's the reason why. So that I may win more. Paul says, Listen, I, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a man pleaser. I'm not a people pleaser. I'm not walking in fear of man. I'm not, I'm not trying to manipulate anybody to get them to like me. No, I, I'm I'm free from y'all. However, 
for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of winning souls, I've made notice. I voluntarily made myself a slave to all. I'm going to lay aside my personal preferences or my freedoms for the sake of others, because the greater goal and the bigger goal is to win them over. He says, for though I am free from all men, I made myself a slave to all so that, so that I may win more. Notice, to the Jews, I became a Jew. Why? So that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not being myself under the law. Why, Paul? So that I might win those who are under the law. Verse 21. To those who are without law, as without law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all men, so that I may by all means, notice, he didn't say save everybody, because he know that that's not going to happen. That's his, de his desire, he said, is to win more. In verse 19, verse 22, he says, I become all things to all men so that I may by all means save some. Do you think Paul, when he was going to the Jews, he did things that were repulsive to the Jewish community? Do you think Paul would have went to the Jews knowing their diet and their uh, uh, culture has certain restrictions and guidelines and he knew that these things that he did would offend them and he did it anyway? Do you think that he went into these different settings and communities and context and did things that were offensive because, hey, you know, at least I got your attention, right? No. He says his goal was to win them over. So that means, he says, I wanted to lay aside and set aside my personal feelings and beliefs so that I may win. I may win some. Come here. Shouldn't that be our attitude when we're addressing the black community? Now, I'm talking about certain cultures and certain contexts. You have to know who you are engaging. You have to know that. And here's what that means. If you are not street material, then don't go into the streets. Leave that for people who are called to do that type of that type of ministry or that type of work. But then don't diss them because they're doing what you can't do. Or or they're not doing it the way you think they should do it. Yeah, I think I think the principle applies, uh, Proverbs, because I'm talking about the, the principle of it. I'm talking about the principle of it. I'm talking about if we're trying to get people to listen. If we're trying to get people to listen, then the question is, what are we what are we getting their attention with? I mean, let, let set, set aside set aside evangelism for a second. Set aside evangelism for a second. Let's 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 bring it to our let's bring it to our shelf. Let's bring it to our our front door. How did how did someone win you over to Christ? Did they do it by keep giving you gospel tracts and putting scriptures and stuff in your in your lunch and 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 and, and you know and and setting your presets to every Christian station? No, I hope they didn't. What Paul, what, I mean, what Paul is, his, his goal was to win them to Christ, but he still had to relate to a culture. Remember even when he was at Mars Hill in, in Acts 17. He engaged them in philosophy before he hit them with the gospel. He knew his audience. This reminds me also um, 
Let's, let's, let's look at another. Let's look at another text. Verse 23 says, I do all things for the sake of the gospel so that I might uh, so that I may become a fellow partaker uh, of it. But I want to look at I want to look at another text. First, first Chronicles, uh, I believe, chapter 12, verse uh, 32. Yes. The sons of Issachar, men who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do. They understood. The t- that's it. That, that, that's it, sis. Yeah, the, the principle. The principle, y'all. The principle applies. It's the it's it's the culture. It's the context. It's the it's the individuals. How how am I trying to reach them? And with what is the question? If I know certain things are going to be listen, I don't want to unnecessarily offend people, but if what I am saying that is truthful offends them then it was necessary but to intentionally offend for the sake of offending no that that's not that's not god and oh by the way christian or non-christian i would say that that's wrong but candace has a pattern of pissing black folk off and she knows this and oh no, by the way I ain't the only one saying this. There are other fellow black conservatives who have taken issue and umbrage with Candace Owens, with how she relates to black people, which is why she can't relate to black people in the hood. She can't relate to black people in in, in, in the inner cities. She can't. But unfortunately, she doesn't care. But what she's done, she's poo-pooed and pissed on other people who do care. I know. I know. I know. I know. And all I'm saying is, I hope and pray that Kanye surrounds himself, like I said in the earlier post, surrounds himself with godly people who would hold him accountable. Because if he is truly saved, and I pray to God that he is genuinely saved. And and, and, and listen, please miss me, ladies and gentlemen. Please miss me with thinking that he has to do certain things a certain way. Otherwise, he ain't this. Well, how did you get saved? When you you and I got saved, did we immediately just stop doing everything we did? Now, listen, listen, listen. You and I, by the Spirit of God, God can remove things away from us instantly, but let's keep it a buck. Our sanctification was incremental as well. You didn't just stop cussing. You didn't just stop screwing. You didn't just stop smoking and hoeing and drinking and everything. You, you, you didn't just you didn't just immediately stop. I think sometimes we need to be, be we need to be reminded of what God delivered us from and is continuing to deliver us from. I'm not making no excuses for what Kanye did by having Marilyn Manson. Uh, uh, performing with him at all. But you know what I'm reminded of? I'm reminded of the prophets of old who confronted kings and, 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 and saints of old who were not tearing down their idols and were not removing the Asherah and were not removing the Baals. But you know what God said? They did right in this, they did right in that, but they did evil in the sight of the Lord in this and this and in this. Come on now. Come on. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. But God said he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. By marrying these foreign wives who drew his heart away from the Lord. That's what the Bible says. But he was God's man. Yeah, those parts of the Bible that we see that these men did good. But listen, listen, listen. These same men did some evil stuff. Being saved. And that's all I'm saying. And y'all know me. I don't, I don't make excuses for sin. I'm just saying we need to be mindful of this. See, the difference between Kanye and, 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 and us our lives 
are lived out in private. Their lives are lived out, or his life, or others who are professing to be Christians are lived out in public, and we see it. And we see it. But when we see it, yes, we need to call it out. We need to call it for what it is. Call it sin. Call it wickedness. Call it abomination. Call it all that. Call it all that. But we're to hold fast to that which is true and abstain from every form of evil. That's what we're called to do. Period. Full stop. Now, um, so I hope I'm making sense in that in, in that regard. But I, I want to I want to play I want to play the video, and 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 I'll play a, a portion of this uh, with Tucker Carlson and and with when, with Kanye. Okay. Um, yeah, he explained he explained the White Lives Matter um, hat. I mean, White White Lives Matter uh, shirt uh, and things and things of that nature. Again. I'm talking about not necessarily was it sin for him to wear it. Was it wise? I, I think Kevin, you 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 mentioned uh, and I didn't miss I missed your question. You said if you get a chance, what did you say? If you get a chance, circle back and answer the B clause of my question. Can we say Kanye unequivocally he sinned wearing the shirt, causing him to need to repent? No, I didn't say that. I'm saying it's not. It wasn't wise. If you're trying, if you're trying to get the attention of black folk, you don't do it by pissing them off. And you definitely don't do it by having somebody that you know is going to piss them off. That was immature. That was unwise. Um, yeah, no, no, it's cool, bro. It, no, it, it's cool. It's cool. Um, she claims to be a Christian from what I was told. But I'm just, I'm just speaking I'm just speaking from the from the from the standpoint of a principle. How do we relate to people? We, listen, we can't relate to everybody the same way. We know that we we should know this. We should know this. We can't relate to everybody the same way. Because if you relate to everybody the same way, then we are sinning. How do I know that? I'm glad you asked. Let's go back to the scripture real quick. Let's go back to the scriptures. First Thessalonians five fourteen. We urge you, brethren, look at the text. We urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly, that's that's one, encourage the fainthearted, that's two, help the weak, that's three, be patient with everyone. There's three kinds of people that, that the word of God tells us how we are to relate to. How we are to relate to. Oh, she says she's not a Christian. Okay, well, then that, 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 that goes, there that goes then. On Joe Rogan, she says she wasn't a Christian. Okay, cool. But the principle still applies. The principle still applies. And if she's not a Christian and Kanye is a Christian, then there we go. Because who is discipling and who is leading who? Or who is influencing who? Oh, and let me let me also huh, let me also dispel this misinformation. Someone said that, and I'm not sure if it was you or somebody else, um, that Candace Owens and Kanye are not leaders. Wrong, 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 wrong. Everyone on this on this live, including yours truly, are leaders. And a leader is simply a person with influence. A leader is, a, is someone who has the power to influence change and or behavior this is why jesus said too much is given much is required and i tell my children all the time somebody is always watching you ma'am sir you and i are leading people whether we are doing it actively or inactively That's not my point, bro. That's not my point. If Kanye has political aspirations, can you blame him for having her in this camp? Again, it's about association and 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 aligning yourself 
with individuals or persons, what is their goal? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If we're trying to, if we're trying to help people and win people and to help their minds change from a view that they have been, that they have been mind screwed for decades, then why should they listen to me if the person that I have on my side has been dunking and dissing the black community? Or is not received by the black community. And nor do they care to be received by the black community. Let, let me just go ahead and fast forward and, and, and get and just cut to the chase on this then. Um, I don't know if I want to play the video. I mean, if y'all seen the video, I don't have to play y'all. We I think we've all seen it, right? We've all seen it, have we not? I mean, if if y'all want me to play, because uh, I want I want to go to some other video clips because I think I think this also lays out my point uh more succinctly than than what i'm than what i'm you know talking about right now and i don't want to have to restate something i believe that we already have are have have seen uh but i can i can play a little bit of it if you want and um and and we can you know push on to some other things that i want to really help us see as as a people black and white christian and even our non-christian friends who may watch this um but you know he he was on he was on Tucker Carlson and he gave his reason for why he wore the uh, why he wore the shirt, and I'm saying that the shirt did not help the cause. Uh, yeah, and 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 here's what he said on Tucker he wants to run in yeah but so but so, so does Candace Candace is talking about running in 2024 too and you know what Andrew Stanton King said Andrew Stanton King she gave a prediction she said she believes that both of them are going to run in 2024 knowing listen knowing that Trump is, that Trump may run or it's highly possible that Trump is going to run in 24 as well too and if that be the case then my question would be why why? Why 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 would Candace and Kanye try to run in 2024 knowing that the possibility for Trump to run in 2024 is greater and we and, and he would have a greater chance of winning than than these two would. Why would you want to why would you even want to entertain and compete with that? So, let me let me play a portion of it and then and then we'll get to some other clips. I'll just do that. All right? Let me uh, meet the mic here. Just came from Paris Fashion Week. You just landed and yeah. the lanyard's still on from it. And there's a photograph on it. What is that? It's a photograph of a baby's ultrasound. Why is that? And that you designed that? Yes. Why? What does that mean? Uh, it just represents life. I'm pro-life. Boy, so you wear it on a badge. What what kind of response do you get? And, and good, amen, I agree. I don't care about people's responses. I care about the fact that there's more black babies being aborted than born in New York City at this point. That 50% of black death in America is abortion. So I really don't care about people's responses. I perform for an audience of one and that's God. <laughs> I'm, starting, I'm starting to see why they want to make you be quiet. Um, how, when did you start to feel this way? When did you start to realize this? I, I really felt like, I think I started to really feel this need to express myself on another level when Trump was running for office and I liked him. Yes. And every single person in Hollywood, from my ex-wife to my mother-in-law to my manager at that time to, you know, my, my so-called friends slash handlers around me told me like, if I said that I like Trump, that my career would be over, that my life would be over. Uh, they said stuff like people get killed for wearing a hat like that. They threatened my life, they put my life. They basically said that I would be killed uh, for uh, wearing the hat. I had a, a, someone call me last night and said anybody wearing a White Lives Matter shirt is going to be greenlit, and that means that they're going to beat them up if they wear it. And I'm like, you know, okay, green light me then. <laughs> you know, you know, God, 
builds warriors in a different way. I don't know if it's because of me being a born in Atlanta and growing up on the south side of Chicago that, you know, he made me for such a, such a time like this. It's like with David, you know, he tended to the sheep, but while he was out there, he had to fight all kinds of animals. So when it was time for Goliath to come, he thought because he was a sheep herder that he didn't have the skill set to take down Goliath. And the thing that I have is the position, I have my heart, but the number one thing is we have God on our side. And for the people, even if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. So you made reference to the White Lives Matter t-shirt, mm -hmm. which you brought out at Paris Fashion Week. Yeah. Why, wh why did you do that and what did it mean? You know, I did. I do certain things from a feeling. I like, I just, I just channel the energy. It just feels right. It's using a gut instinct, a connection with God, and just brilliance. You know, like as if you ask, like Tanya Harding, how she did the the triple flip or the triple spin. Yeah. She was in so much practice that when it was time for her to skate in a in a comp in a competitive format, it just happened. Like it happened outside of practice. It happened in the real format, and that's what hap That's what's happening. Is God is like preparing us for the real for the real battles, and we are we are in a battle with the media. Like the majority of the media has a, a godless agenda, and. The jokes are not working. This whole like, oh yeah, he's crazy, and all these things they don't work because the media has, you know, they've also watched travesties happen, just even specifically to me, and just watch it and act like it wasn't happening, and they stay quiet about it. Uh, what have they? So, what have? They what, I want to answer the the white. Yeah. I, I feel like someone caught what I was saying. The comparison of Tanya Harden about the the White Lives Matter. You know, my dad is a educated um, ex-Black Panther, and he put a text to me today, he said, white lives matter, ha, 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 ha. And I said, I thought the shirt was a funny shirt. I thought the idea of me wearing it was funny. And I said, Dad, what do you think was funny? He said, just, just a Black man stating the obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, my dad doesn't listen to rap music, and he's like super educated. We, we opened up a water distribution center in the Dominican Republic together. He's like the original Steve Jobs, but he was getting blocked every which way with all of his ideas, and he didn't have uh, an endless bank account, and he didn't have an Instagram. So all these ideas, he had to like take them back and compress them. Like my dad is the most brilliant person that I know, and we actually have a strained relationship because I was taken from him because my mom. And, and I, I'm gonna stop it there because he he goes into he goes to talk about his uh, his history and the relationship with his dad because of his mom, you know, keeping him from him. Um, and you you pretty much know all of that. But you heard what he said. He said that it was uh, it was obvious, right? So the reason why he wore, from what he says here, the reason why he wore the, the, the White Lives Matter shirt is because he said it's obvious that White Lives Matter. But he also mentioned later on in the interview how these same uh, white people try to control control us and tell us what black what black being what, what being black is and things of that nature. Okay, got it. But the the issue is what message did that send? And and I would have to agree with Angela uh, with Angela on this. Why not say white white life matter instead of saying white lives matter or, or black life matters? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but ultimately, all life, all lives matter because that is the biblical approach to all of this. And so my, my issue is what message did that send? And how, also, who was helping you send this message? I mean, we, we act as though Candace Owens does not have a history of saying and doing things to get the black community up in a titsy. And and on top of that, it's not that it's not that there's a, a, just a few people. This stuff, this there, there are people within 
the, the conservative party, the conservative movement, black conservatives who have taken issues with Candace Owens and Candace Owens have tried to destroy their campaigns. Kim Klasick is one. Andrew Stan King is another one. I mean, my goodness. It, it's, I mean, I, I can go down the list. And I will in just a minute. But I want I want to I want to also share this this uh this video. This of course now how many of y'all know who this is? You should some of, some of y'all do some of y'all do. Uh, Andrew Stan King, right? She makes some points that I believe are, are are good and I agree with. Some things I don't agree with. But in this in this in this video, I'm gonna I'm play two 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 portions or maybe uh, two segments of this video, and. Uh, and let you hear our, hear our thoughts about this because she did make some she did make some 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 good points uh, re regarding uh, Kanye and and uh, and Candace. So let me go ahead and uh, let you hear it. How is wearing a White Lives Matter shirt supposed to make us understand this? this attack on black life, right? Because what I posted on IG and everybody is in my comments, I'm saying this is the very reason why him and Candace should have been wearing a shirt that say black life matters. There is a direct attack on black life. This should help you all understand why it was so offensive. Now, everything he said, I absolutely agree with. Everybody conservatives going crazy. This is my prediction for 2024. I've told you all this before. Now, I don't want to forget, see, Christians get all caught up in the BS and they forgot that it was, y'all was just crying about him burning the church down with Marilyn Manson and setting itself on fire, okay? We, we just went through this. Y'all done already forgot that. I honestly believe, and I hate to say it, and, 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 I think they're ops. I, I think, I, although everything he said was true, this is what I believe. I believe that Candace and Kanye are going to run in 2024 in opposition to President Trump if he announces that he is going to win. I believe all of this is a setup. I do believe that they are going to run for office. And I want to say this. If you are trying to send a message to America that Black life is at stake because Kanye said in the interview, he said that they are trying to do everything that they can to take us out. They are intentionally trying to get rid of black people. I know that. We all know that. If that is the case, Kanye, then you should have most certainly either wore a shirt that says all life matters or black life matters. All of this is about a psyop. All of this is to keep people going back and forth at each other. All of this is about causing confusion. All of this is about pitting white against black. Why? For the ultimate grift. Now, Kanye also said a lot of things that made sense. Kanye said, I honestly believe every community has their own community with hospitals doctors all that he's saying the black people we need this now although what kanye is saying is true what i'm saying is why we ain't got it because when i think about kanye and all his money when i think about his wife kim kardashian and all their money when i think about his friends p diddy and jay-z all in with all of their money the actions don't line up with the words these rich entertainers, I told y'all before, and these athletes, they could have been built or created a city for black people. Do you all know that we can go and purchase our own island? They have islands for sale. And we could actually purchase this land, all migrate there, and create our own government. I hear what they saying, and what they're saying is true, but do I believe that they are coming from a place where they really, really want to make a difference? I don't know what this is about. Guys, I'm, 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 I know y'all love Kanye. I know everything that they said was what he said on Tucker Carlson was factual. But I'm telling you something in my spirit is just not sitting right. Everybody just sit back. We're going to wait and see what happens. At the end of the day, all lives matter, right? So now they telling me I'm racist because I said this is the very reason why he should have wore a shirt that said Black Life Matters. Like, how is it not racist 
for Kim and Kanye, who we know love white people because they married white people and procreated with white people. How is it not racist for them to be black and put on the shirt and say white lives matter? But then when I point out the obvious of what Kanye is saying about this direct attack on black life, then all of a sudden we race. Well, everybody racist then. Everybody is racist. And the bottom line is this. When it comes to the abortion issue, regardless of who been fighting for it, we know why abortion was created. Abortion was not created to get rid of black life. Yeah, Candace, I'm sorry, y'all. Abortion was not created to get rid of white life. Abortion was created to get rid of black people. So now with 40% of the black population having been aborted, nobody should have a problem with us saying that black life matters. There's a difference between the organization and the movement. We know that. But if they can say white life matters, then we can say black life matters. And that's just the bottom line. But at the end of the day, all life matters. But stand on what you want to stand on. The reason why. Just want to stop there. Now, she made some good points. It was something that she said also in the video um, about about Jesus, that she wasn't there. She didn't know what Jesus did for, for the for, for black man uh, or for the black you know, for black people, I, I can tell you, Angie, what Jesus did for the black person, for the black people. Uh, he saved us. He added us to his family. Uh, the, the first the first black man uh, carried the cross for our Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. Simon and Cyrene. Carried the cross of our Lord. That was a privilege. He was forced to do it, but nonetheless, um, I think I think even even with that, we have to be careful and be mindful uh, with our words with that. Uh, and if you're a Christian too, Angela, uh, he he did he did enough for you. He saved you. If you are truly saved, you're a professing Christian. Did you say it? Okay, fine. Uh, he chose to save you. So he he's done he's done more than enough for for, for black folk. Just read the church, the church fathers, Augustine, Tertullian, Origen. I mean, Cyprian. Come on. So, but anyway, I just wanted to clear that up. Um, but let's continue on because I want to. I want to also show you that again with this whole relationship with the black community, and why I believe it was not a good thing and not a good look for what Kanye did, especially with having. Candace Owens in tow because of the the relationship or the lack thereof that she has with the black community uh, at large. But let me uh, cue this one up and let you hear this one as well, too. Let's see. Why is this one changing? I don't know why it does that. All right, here we go. First, like one, Angela. Yes. What does conservative thought, thought and ideology? First of all, let me ask you all this question. Uh, and if there's any white people here, and if you're not white, that's fine. Feel free to answer this question. Have you ever met this man? Ever heard this man before? Rather, have you ever have you ever watched or seen this 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 man before? Do y'all know who he is? And and the work that he has done and represents within the black community anybody aside from his name i'm just asking to be honest have you ever have you ever heard of him before have you ever heard candace owens have you ever heard candace owens uh promote him he he he's the founder of uh black guns matter i believe it's called he teaches black empowerment. He teaches, you know, uh, education regarding our Second Amendment rights. Uh, he, he, he's a great speaker when it, and, and he knows his stuff when it comes to these to these uh, to these issues. Um, but he has a lane as well, too. He has a lane to run within conservatism. But I, I just wanted to see if you heard about him and 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 and. Just wanted to get your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know you haven't, Erica. I, I know you haven't, sis. I know you haven't. And, and I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, 
technology mean to you? Wow. So for me, personally, well, first what I want to say is I want to thank you for using, this, was, this wasn't a panel in the beginning. This was your shot for you to be on stage. But you decided that you wanted to open up this space for all of us to come on here. And I think that that's very courageous of you to share this, this time with us. And um, this is what we need in the Republican Party. We need to be highlighting all of the minority voices that are standing for conservatism. Did, did you hear that? Did you, did you hear that? Did you hear that? You said you haven't heard from him in a long time. Candace interviewed him before. Good. I wonder how long ago that, that has been because there had been some other developments that have occurred. And I know she and 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 Maj ain't ain't rocking uh together um uh, anymore. And and I'll show you why. And I'll explain to you why. Um but yeah, so but notice what what what, what Angela said. She said that that we need to be promoting and 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 giving people the opportunities and the platforms, you know what I'm saying, the, the candidates, giving that exposure, especially those that are in the in the hood, those that are in the urban communities, trying to make changes within their within their in their cities and their communities. Going somewhere with that. I'm going somewhere with that. Um, for me personally, conservatism is my beliefs. It's where I stand. It's, it's my moral code. It's everything that I stand on and what I believe. And that's what conservatism is to me. And I think that, you know, regardless of our religions, regardless of our skin colors, regardless of our cultures, there are some things that bring us together on common ground. And, you know, that's freedom of speech. We want to make sure that we're protecting the innocence of our children. We want freedom of religion. There are just some things that bring us together as conservatives. So, so you said something about freedom of speech, and you're very outspoken. Yes. And this is America uncanceled. Yes. It and they're trying to, to cancel the kid. They tried to cancel you a little bit. <laughs> yes, so they in, are. And being outspoken to being one of those conservative values, being that freedom of speech, how are you dealing well, with people who well, go through Twitter and let's, cancel you? Let's that? address it. So we know that in this election, there were some things going on in regards to the conspiracy theories with Q, right? Yeah. And I think that me as a person, before I ever got into the conservative movement, I've always been an advocate, even if it's for abused children or whether it's for those people that are incarcerated. So I think that any allegations coming forward in regards to any type of abuse when it comes to children deserves to be investigated. It deserves to be made aware of. And I think that, you know, once we find out, you know, whether this is true or not, then we can move on. But we at least have to be able to address it. So right now, you guys may see out in the media a lot of people wanting to cancel me for addressing allegations of child abuse. You're talking to someone that is a survivor of sexual abuse. So that's something that I definitely take to heart. We have to cancel the cancel culture, mm. right? right? Cancel the cancel culture. Now this next clip is is going to be uh, important. It's going to lead into what um, what I want to talk about as well too, and why this is we we have to be mindful, and I believe even even careful of having this blind loyalty and blind allegiance to anybody just because uh, they may have good values or maybe because uh, the things that they may say are true, while at the same time the things that they are saying causes more offense unnecessarily again i'm not talking about you're offended because somebody said the truth but i'm saying if you're saying it knowing knowing that what you are saying is offensive unnecessarily but you are doing it anyway and then don't care to connect and and, and to explain and to relate that's the problem so um but what this sister's get ready to say how many of you all have uh have heard of, of a a woman, uh, and I think she's a Christian, uh, Shamika Michelle. She's been on Jason Whitlock uh, several times. I think she's a she's a regular. Uh, she has regular appearances there. 
to give a regular commentator to give uh, uh, her thoughts and perspective on certain topics. But uh, Shamika Michelle, uh, she was also a panelist here at the CPAC uh, panel 21. And she gave her thoughts about how everyone basically has, you know, has a lane to run. And you may not be able to relate to everybody, but one person doesn't mean that they have the right or one person is not all going to relate to everybody. And so she made some good points in here and I want y'all to listen to it and um, I want y'all to listen to it and check it out. With all of this being said, uh, Democrats still currently have a death grip all pun intended, mm -hmm. okay? I want Shamika as well as Angela to, to deal with this. Have a death grip on youth and young adults. How have they been so successful in doing so? And what can we learn from it and apply to ourselves? Because they have been successful with that literal and figurative death grip on, you know, black and brown communities, especially with youth. How have they been able to do that? And how can we kind of right the ship in that regard? I think they've been able to do that by being more inclusive. And I think that's something that we can learn in the conservative party. There's not just one type of black conservative. And I feel like that's where we failed over the last four years. We propped up one type of black conservative. And just because white people like them, it was like, oh, yeah, we love her. Oh, God, she has her own thinking, you know. Oh, yeah, woo. But that wasn't necessarily who black, you know, the black people really identify with. And I like to kind of make this analogy. A lot of people are familiar with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. Now this is the story all, all about, about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. OK, just say Carlton and Will were both conservatives. Carlton could go to Bel-Air, and he could talk to the people of Bel-Air all day long. But you could not send Carlton to Philly to talk to those people. You would have had to send Will to talk to the people who had the same type of life experiences yeah. that Will had. Yeah. So when it comes to conservatives, you know, being conservative, stop propping up Carlton Banks, thinking that Carlton is going to be the one <laughs> to be able to communicate with the, the wheels of the conservative party. You're going to have to prop up the wheels so that they can speak the language that people understand and share experiences with. And I think that's how we fail. I feel like the Democrats do a very good job of making sure they have people that represent all around. And yep. that's what we need to do better as conservatives. You can't take Carlton to Philly going, it's not unusual. <laughs> so it's, no, that's not going to work. <laughs> and to, um, <laughs> that was awesome. Absolutely. So I just kind of want to want to piggyback off of what Shamika is saying. You know, the the messenger is just as important as the message. You can have the right message, but the wrong messenger, and people won't get it. So one of the things that I say all the time, and people are like, oh, God, Angela, you always say something that makes people mad. Well, here's the thing. We got to face the truth, right? And the truth is that the Democratic Party is really good at playing identity politics. Republicans are not. We're just honest and straightforward, just like our president. We don't care how you take what we say. We're just going to give it to you. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. In doing that, right, in doing that, we have to remember that everybody just can't handle the blunt, honest truth. And there are some times that we're going to have to get in and we're going to have to stand before the people and they're going to have to hear from somebody that they can relate to. So when you want to send a message out to single black mothers that are struggling on welfare, that are trying to better their lives, then that's when you come get Angela Stanton King, somebody that was on welfare and got off welfare and got her life together and is now a, a business owner. I mean, you have to make sure that we are identity in our politics as well, because how can we relate if we're not related? And we don't have to be related by blood. We can be related by experience. Right. So what I want the conservative party to understand because I myself, along with a lot of other people on this stage, have come up under a very, very huge attack, just like everybody else was standing with this party. And with that sacrifice, we need your support. Right. We need your support. We need. Now, you, you see, you see the point that I'm trying to make. You see the point that I'm trying to make. I, I hope y'all do. I, I really hope you do, because that should resonate with all of us. 
as Christians, as individuals, period. Um, I mean, my goodness. <laughs> That's even with me. I know, I know my style is not for everybody. But you know, the mob has tried to do everything they could to shut me up because they don't like my style, my delivery, my approach. But people like you do. Y'all don't have a problem with it. So God has God has people in his body and in the world that he uses to relay his message to different people and in different ways and in different contexts. So when I when I so what when I'm when I'm saying to all of us is we have to be careful with who we align ourselves with. If we're trying, if, if God has called me to reach a particular people and, a, and, and target a particular group of people, then who I got riding with me matters. It just does. It just does. If you're on a mission, then what you need to accomplish that mission matters. And if you need a, a 40 cal, but you only carrying a nine, then your mission is going to be hard to, 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 to complete. It just is. So whatever God has equipped you to have and to use, he wants you to use it. And it applies in every sphere of life. If God is calling us to help the black community to wake up, then you better know your audience. You better know your target. You better know the people that you're about to engage in verbal combat with. Because if you don't, then you're setting yourself up to fail. And then you're not really caring for the people that you claim to care about. So this is why I'm saying that if Kanye is trying to reach, if, if, if Kanye is trying to reach a culture, he has a greater and better chance of doing it than, than, than Candace Owens. Candace is not trying to reach the hood. Her Blexit organization was not trying to reach the hood. Those are facts. But those who were trying to reach the hood, she slammed. She discredited. This woman has gone to this woman has gone as far to say to black conservatives that they're wasting their time going into the hood trying to run and to and to try to try to change their communities because they're being democrat controlled. But then how, how do you how do you help change their communities and their culture if we don't go? You see what I'm saying? That that's that's that unrelated attitude. That, that ain't, that, that, that. So that's why people say that she don't relate to the black community. Because of statements like that. And also situations like this. Candace Owens under attack. Pro-Trump black conservatives go to war against each other. Um, good question, brother. Good question. And, and I'm, 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 I'm liking this. I'm, I'm loving the conversation y'all. Um, um, but you said, you said, Kevin, you said, uh, so what do we, what do we, what do you suggest uh, we do with Candace? Um, as we would do with anybody when she's on point, we applaud it. We get behind it. But when she's out of pocket, when she's out of line, we don't. We call it out. We we call it out. And she definitely needs Jesus. And she said that she's not a Christian. She needs the gospel. She she needs to be saved. We need to pray for her salvation. Um, but in this report here, Candace Owens under attack, pro-black, I mean pro-Trump black conservatives go to war against each other. And we all know who these individuals here are. Candace, Maj Ture, and Brandon Tatum. In a strange and isolated realm of MAGA-loving Black activists, at least two groups are at war with one another, and insults are flying with no end in sight. Maj Ture, founder of right-wing group called Black Guns Matter, whose legal name is Martin A. Jones, and his allies are at war with better-known Black conservative activists Candace Owens and Brandon Tatum. 
This conflict appears to have been brewing under the surface for some time, but broke into the public sphere after a panel discussion led by Torre at the conservative at the Conservative Political Action Conference with the CPAC in Orlando last month. Mind this, this is this is in 2021, so this is last year's uh, article here. The apparent rift between the activists centers around claims that Owens and Tatum can't relate to the African American communities because they aim their rhetoric almost entirely at white conservatives. Furthermore, activists on Torrey's team have framed their argument through a difficult to follow analogy drawn from the classic sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel Air, perhaps in an effort to ensure that white people don't know what they're talking about. Just not one of those type of black conservative, and I feel like is that what we have failed over the past four years. We propped up one type of black conservative panelist and commentator, Shamika Michelle stated at the CPAC gap. We know we, we, you saw the video, right? So they're just stating what she said in the in the video. Say, quote, a lot of people are familiar with the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Michelle continued, just say Carlton Banks and Will Smith were both conservative. Carlton could go to Bel Air and he could talk to the people of Bel Air all day long, but you could not send Carlton to Philly to talk to those people. You would have to send Will, who had the same type of life experience that Will had. So when it comes to being conservative, stop propping up Carlton Banks, thinking that Carlton is going to be the one able to communicate with the wills of the conservative party. Asked by, asked by Salon, whether this analogy could be understood as an attack on Candace Owens, Michelle responded, quote, I wasn't specifically referring to her, she added. However, that Owens comes across to many in black in, in the black community as more of a Rachel Dolezal, a reference to the now notorious white woman who passed as black for many years. She has some good points, but her messaging does more to make white people com comfortable than it does to enlighten the black community. As for the Press Prince analogy, viewers of a certain age may already grasp it. The character Carlton struggled to relate to the black community because he had grown up in the suburbs surrounded by white people. Torre, who sells T-shirts promoting anti-blank you know, rhetoric and calls his fans solutionaries for reasons not easy to understand or explain, expressed frustration on Twitter after his CPAC panel told older black conservative voices had not retweeted, had not been retweeting his panel remarks. Further asking if they were jealous. One can assume that the shade was, di was directed at Owens and Tatum, who both have followings encompassing at least a million people. You see the tweet there. Reacting to the CPAC remarks made by Michelle, Brandon Tatum declared in a subsequent YouTube video that it was clear enough who her target was. Quote, we all know that she is talking about Candace Owens, end quote. Tatum, who formerly worked alongside Owens at Turning Point USA, continued by saying that another panel speaker, former Republican, congressional candidate, and QAnon fan, Angela Stanton King, quote, ragged me and ragged Candace Owens for being married to people who weren't black, end quote. Moving down the list of foes, Tatum continued, quote, Maz Torre, I believe in my personal opinion, have zero credibility as far as I'm concerned. Maz Torre isn't even his real name. I have no respect for this person, end quote. Asked by Salon why Owens did not appear at CPAC this year, communication director Ian Wal Walters said she had been invited but did not elaborate on whether her absence was related to Torre and his allies' claims that she doesn't connect to Black America. Quote, we did invite Candace Owens to CPAC 21, and we featured Mr. Tatum on our stage in 2019. We don't always have the same people on our stage every year, Walters told Salon. In a clip posted on the right wing YouTube channel on March 3rd, Torre was in a better mood, seen by drinking a bootlegger. And he said, listen, man, beautiful women are in my DMs every day. I travel the world whenever I feel like it. I have no masters, none, none. My, my life is awesome. And I'm living this freedom ish. Then this topic shifted to Brandon Tatum, who, brand, who brands himself as, quote, Officer Tatum, end quote, along, although he left the police department in Tucson, Arizona in 2017. Quote, first of all, he's not an officer. He just calls himself that, end quote, Torrey declared. Quote, he's not an officer. He hasn't been an officer for years now, end quote. Salon reached out to Torrey by email for comment, but he did not respond directly. Instead of posting a series of seven tweets, speaking of Tatum's accusation that he doesn't use his real name and calling on the long history of alternative monikers in hip hop. Quote, even saying things like Maz Torrey ain't his real name to discredit, end quote, he wrote. 
completely ignoring the fact that I was a hip hop artist and the multiple stories of me choosing my name for a for self after a, a certain age. Did Ho's name or did Ho's mom, excuse me, name him Jay Z? No, but they skipped that for a story. So you see this this issue between Candace Owens, Brandon Tatum, and Maj and 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 Andrew Stanton King. Uh, this this was not this has not been resolved. This has not been resolved. Here's another one. We all probably know about this one. Candace Owens versus Kim Klasick. Why the two black female conservatives are feuding. Candace Owens and Kimberly Klasick, two high profile black conservative activists, have been feuding on social media over the past few days, culminating in the former claiming to have incredible information about the latter that will blow your mind. Owens is a prominent activist who hosts a show called Candace on the conservative news website, The Daily Wire. She has caused controversy on multiple occasions over the last few years after commenting on several topics, including George Floyd and Adolf Hitler. She created controversy again when she said that Dr. Anthony Fauci should go to prison. She also said Naomi Osaka uh, to, to quit. No, she also told Naomi Osaka to quit tennis after the latter opened up about her mental health struggles before backtracking in on her comments hours later. Klasik is a former Republican nominee for Maryland's 7th Congressional District who garnered national attention in 2020 when she posted a controversial political ad titled Black Lives Don't Matter to Democrats, in which she asked voters in Baltimore to vote for Republicans instead of the Democrats. The feud between Owens and Klasik appears to have begun on Friday, June 18th, when a former tweeted that President Joe Biden making Juneteenth a federal holiday was the Democrats trying to repackage segregation. In several tweets posted after Biden signed the bill officially making June 19th a national holiday, Owens said she would be celebrating Independence Day on July 4th, but not Juneteenth, which commemorates the day that the last slaves were told they were free in 1865. And she goes on explaining all of that. In a now deleted tweet on June 18th, Klasik quoted a quote tweeted a post from Owens that said, quote, sometimes I wonder when, if ever, black Americans will wake up to the psychological warfare and perpetual brainwash to believe everything is racist. Klasik wrote in, in reply to the tweet, quote, believe it or not, many in black America are very aware the fight is classism rather racism. Unfortunately, the loudest mouths with the largest platforms represent the majority. This might come to a shock to you because of your lack of engagement with black people. Owens did not reply to the tweet and Klasik explained to a Twitter user who later claimed that Candace's grip is too strong, that she deleted her post as she decided I would just prove it rather than talk about it, talking about it on Twitter. The two stayed silent about their Juneteenth disagreement for two days before the arguments reignited on Sunday when Owens and Klasik criticized each other in several posts on Instagram. The exchange started on Sunday when Klasik replied to several commenters who had asked her to talk about the Candace Owens situation. Klasik claimed that she had been invited on Owens' daily wire program, but said that she refused as, quote, the show can be edited because it is streamed online, end quote and added that quote she doesn't normally let people profit off of a conservative off of a conversation rather with her end quote according to barrett sports media in a report that said quote it is not entirely clear what the two are feuding about she later posted a message on instagram where she said that owens is owens is against cancel culture but spends all of her time canceling people and added quote it was very sad watching her attempt to cancel tennis player Naomi Osaka. No one should be bullied or ha for having anxiety talking to the press. This drama isn't worth any more attention. There are candidates running for office that deserve all of my attention. Responding to Clasic's comments on Monday, Owens accused her of not being authentic and alleged that the former GOP congressional nominee had disabled comments on her post. And basically saying all of that you see there. But let me just scroll down. She said, 
Owens did not reveal any information about the alleged findings, but said that this went from the Twitter tiff to, oh, my goodness, how did no Republican or conservatives realize this? How did none of us stumble upon this? Clasic responded to Owens' comments shortly after writing, imagine spending your entire day trying to call everyone I know in Baltimore in hopes of trying to get dirt on me. Now, she she mentions she mentions that um, Kim Clasic was was a stripper and, and, and also a madam, I think. And, uh, and this is, was in another, uh, report and actually Kim Clasey is suing Candace Owens. And I don't know if that case has been, uh, has been settled and been resolved or not, but, and here's another report. Let me make this a little bit larger. All right. You know, it's bad when Candace Owens has managed to offend the very people that she's been unsuccessfully trying to galvanize over the past few years in her efforts to sink even deeper into the sunken place. But that precisely that is precisely the scenario she's created for black conservatives when her relentless criminalization of Ahmaud Arbery, the black man who was jogging when two white men armed themselves, hunted him down and killed him in the middle of the road in broad daylight. Um, I'm, I'm just reading this stuff to you all because, yeah, I, I agree. I, I totally agree, Tina. It was it was definitely ridiculous and unnecessary. Um, how many of y'all who know who Joe Collins is? Joe Collins. Joe Collins responded to Candace Owens regarding her her uh, comments and and. And statements as well too. This is somewhat mm, somewhat lengthy, but let me just read. Um, let me just read it here for you. The constant attacks on inner city conservative Republicans from these two has has got to stop. It is very disappointing to see someone like Candace Owens once again attacking another Black Republican from the inner city. This has been going on for far too long. Every time Black conservatives or or Republican from the inner city becomes successful, you always have these self-proclaimed thought leaders vilifying us. She has tried to attack me, and now she's attacking Kim Clasey. Candace Owens has somehow convinced white conservative America that she is the end-all, be-all to black conservatism. But Candace did not grow up in, has never spent any time in, nor has any connections to an inner city. Therefore, she does not speak for the black community. She speaks for herself. Her latest attack on Kim is an embarrassing 45 minute incoherent rant about Kim's public campaign finance report and Candace's false perceptions of Kim's personal life, where Candace Owens also accused a Republican success story, Kim Klasick, of committing federal crimes, even accusing her of using campaign funds to purchase cocaine with literally no proof. Candace makes a living attacking inner city conservatives and Republicans who do not want to follow her ideology and by digging into backgrounds and narrowing and narrating her version of someone's life to her base of white conservative donors and followers who have narrow-minded ill-perceived notions of black communities which further fuse the division within america she calls herself the founder of blexit an organization ur urging black democrats to lead the party but this has hardly been the case blexit has not moved the needle in any capacity for black voter turnout or registration. Blexit has turned into one of the biggest grifters, grifters cash grabs next to Black Lives Matter, raking in over 7 million last year, according to tax returns. In fact, Candace stole this platform after gaining popularity supporting President Trump. News One dot com called candace owens a con artist who is following the money and uh who was following the money and buzzfeed reports.com posted receipts showing candace compared president trump to hitler and speculated that he has a small penis when she was ceo of an extreme liberal website that trashed conservatives republicans and president trump on a regular basis 
One of the biggest issues uh, conservative Republicans from inner cities have with Candace and her platform is her rhetoric is merely half truths that do not resonate with conservative Republicans who live in cities controlled by Democrats. She makes it extremely hard for inner city conservatives and Republicans to engage with the people who live there because of no one wants because of no one wants to hear how much of a criminal they are from a self-righteous prick. The self-proclaimed pundit regularly to talk about how democratic policies destroy inner cities, yet managed to de demonize every black person who is murdered by a white person in America by attempting to dig into these individuals' backgrounds to bring up their past and justify their deaths as if their lives are meaningless. This mindset is destructive to future goals of black people joining the Republican Party and conservative movement. Oh, by the way, again, Joe Collins is a Republican. Joe Collins is a black conservative. This is not somebody white. It's not somebody liberal that's saying this. This is Joe Collins from California. Look him up. This mindset is destructive to future goals of black people joining the Republican Party and conservative movement. If Democrat policies have destroyed black and Latino communities, as Candace has stated on numerous occasions, then people who live in these communities are merely victims of said policies. Candace has made millions of dollars talking on talking about on her public platforms. Candace Owens is not the only one. Her so-called organization's co-founder, Brandon Tatum, his wife, Corrine Tatum, RNC committee woman, Hermit Dillon, and former congressional candidate, Tamika Hamilton, all take pride in trashing other black conservative Republicans on their social media platforms, which goes against President Ronald Reagan's Republican commandments. Corrine Tatum is the front runner stirring the pot with her versions of far right cancel culture by making it a point to slander and smear black conservatives based on her uneducated assumptions. Harmeet Dillon of the Dillon Law Group spends time attacking black conservative Republicans running in inner cities like myself and Kim Klasik without even offering to help, without even offering help or guidance. Her actions are not becoming of, of the leadership responsibilities given to a person who holds the title of RNC committee woman. Harmeet is a disgrace to the title, to say the least. Candace and Brandon have yet to host any inner city Blexit events or attempt to personally engage with anyone who lives in an inner city. And most of inner cities do not and will not associate with their organization. But if their talking points are so strong, why don't they visit inner cities and engage with the people they make money off of by calling criminals every day? And where is all this Blexit money going? Maybe we should investigate Blexit's finances and see what's hiding in their IRS documents. The closest Owens has gotten to being near an inner city is when she was being drugged by rapper T.I. as a panelist on a Revolt TV summit. And when she used the NAACP to sue her school because she felt she was being discriminated against by a few white students. The closest Tatum has come to engaging with anyone in the inner city was an embarrassing world star hip hop video that went viral in the black community. This video shows four year officer Tatum on camera, once again, degrading every black person who disagrees with his positions on black people being killed by a white person and accusing them of being a criminal because of their past and spouting a barrage of insults for not being able to maintain his cool while being called out for his ignorance. Owens and Tatum are beyond terrible for the black conservative Republican movement. Candace Owens, Brandon Tatum, Corrine Tatum, Harmeet Dillon, Tamika Hamilton, and a few others fail to respect perspective and accept the fact their half truth are not accurate. It's time to unite our party with respect to one's differences and expel those that refuse. Black Republicans will not be subjected to rules of others. We will stand up and fight back. We will also work to deplatform those who fail to give the same respect they would like. This is America, and our freedom of thought, expression, speech, and religion are not predicated on another opinion. The time for bashing Republicans and conservatives from the inner cities is over. We will fight back. For those of you who continue to echo the sentiment of not supporting candidates who run in the inner cities, I say to you, we're not giving up on our communities. Again, that is from Joe. Uh, Joe Collins, he was running for Congress in California.
Candace Owens sued for $20 million by conservative politician Kim Klasick for defamation. Conservative agitator Candace Owens, is no, is no, who is no stranger to controversy, is embroiled in a battle with another conservative black woman who has sued her in a defamation lawsuit. According to the Baltimore Sun, black conservative politician Kim Klasick has filed a lawsuit against Owens for $20 million in damage due to a video that Owens posted on an Instagram account that alleged that Klasick committed campaign fraud, money laundering, illegally used drugs, and was a madam of a strip club. Clayson was a pro-Trump Republican who ran against and lost to Democrat Representative Kwasi Infume for a chance to represent the Maryland district that was once held by the late Elijah Cummings. She gained notoriety as a featured speaker at the Republican National Convention back in 2020. On June 22nd, Owens sent to Instagram live to state that the charity that Klasik runs, Potential Me, was Ill illegitimate. And also stated that Klasik was a stripper at a club owned by her husband and that she misused campaign funds, according to Klasik's lawsuit. The documents that were filed at Baltimore Co County Circuit Court alleges Klasik lost a book deal. Several politicians had canceled fundraising appearances with her and she lost a contract with a nationally recognized vendor after the video was posted. Although several requests have been directed to Owens to remove the video, she still has not done so. Baseless character assassination has no place in political dialogue, end quote. Klasik's attorney, Jacob Frenkel, said in a written statement, the defendant chose to use her huge social media platform to attack a respected Baltimore political figure. We are using the proper forum, the power of the courts to respond. The detail in Ms. Klasik's lawsuit speaks for itself. And you see the tweet there. then you see it and last but not least i want to read this um this is from felicia killings she's a christian leading black conservatives have had enough of candace owens and republicans passive attitude towards racial rhetoric this is dated in 2019 Uh, let me make this a little bit larger again. All right. For decades, Black conservatives have struggled with trying to find our place at the political table to discuss issues we find important. We often we are often rejected by our friends and family members because we don't ascribe to the collective thought of being Black and Democrat. And at times we are ostracized by those on the right for causing division among the base when we want to tackle social issues that must be addressed. Many black conservatives, by and large, no longer fit within either side of the political spectrum. And it's not hard to see why. I argue that not only is it this type of displacement harmful to the conservative base, but it would dramatically alter the way in which some Americans vote for future candidates. If conservatives and believers want to see more candidates in office who represent our values, then conservatives must take a hard look at what we are doing wrong. What does it mean to be conservative today? This is the question I asked my wonderful audience on Facebook the other day. I wanted to know how they identify conservative values, because from what I've witnessed over the last several months, our actions as a whole clearly do not reflect the values we claim to profess. Growing up, I had a clear understanding of such, of such values. I understood conservatism to be about tra traditional family values, limited government, the free market, economic independence, and a genuine love for God and for country. I understood conservative values to be those that best align with godly moral values, principles that supported loving others, doing unto others that we would want done to us, Christian, Bible-based values. And whenever a political candidate, typically a Republican one, espouse these views it was up to believers like me to vote that person into office this was my upbringing and one i still hold fast to 
because I believe strongly that we should elect officials who will stand for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But over the last few months, I've called into question what it truly means to be conservative. Is conservatism truly synonymous with Christianity? Or is this just a tactic used by political pundits to get Christians to vote Republican? Is conservatism truly about the best interests of the people? Or is it another ploy used to control the portion of the masses? These are legitimate questions and, and I and other conservatives have. And without these answers, conservatives like myself can never hope to reach certain communities with our message. There used to be a time when the people placed individuals at the forefront who expressed strong leadership skills that would uplift others. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., for example, was selected as a leader of the civil rights movement because of his intellect, his spiritual reticence, and his devotion to black Americans. But today, we see a shift away from such leaders. It is as if there are no standards by which people can assume a place of prominence among our own. Leaders today, especially of conservative Christian movements, can be cruel to people, threatening to folks, and completely foul in their treatment of others who disagree with them. These same leaders can lie on folks, malign people's character, and steal from those who are doing incredible work in our communities. Such tactics would be considered reprehensible if anyone on the left did it. But because such individuals are, quote, fighting for our conservative cause, end quote, we give them a pass and elevate them higher. Back in 2017, I first came across Candace Owens on a Fox News airing, and I thought the woman was pure fire. She had a strong, appealing presence and spoke of our conservative message in such a way that commanded attention. I love Candace Owens, and I still love her, despite the criticism I have for her. But in October 2018, I realized that my allegiance to her was mis misplaced. On the day she launched her version of the Blexit movement, I was a bit surprised by it because the conservative movement had taken on this new form of identity politics, which conservatives, for the most part, reject. But I stuck with her nonetheless. I promoted her movement to my Facebook audience of about 10,000 followers. I told people we should support this because, after all, it was Candace Owens. And I and had I and had I not done a bit and, and I had not done a bit of research into the Blexit topic a bit more, I would still be promoting it as something purely her own. When I realized Blexit had been stolen, had been a stolen movement and organization from an established black owned business down in Minnesota, I was baffled. When I realized Candace Owens already knew that Blexit existed and yet promoted herself as the founder of it. I was livid when I realized Owens had literally stolen intellectual property of the original Blexit, including its name, its brand and its logo. I was pissed off. Why? Because Owens had done harm to a community of black Americans who were and are doing exceptional work directly in our neighborhoods. I was angry because the conservative movement that I have come to love dearly was being used to harm the people we claim we want to reach all in the name of helping black people. So I told my audience at FK Ministries will no longer support Candace Owens, but you are free to follow whomever you want. Conservatives claim to be the champion of free thinking, but some only appreciate our free thinking when we think exactly like them. When I made the choice to distance myself from Owens, so many of my following lost their minds. They were livid with me, but not with Owens and her actions. They didn't care about her theft. They didn't care about how her actions affected the original Blexit founder. Some made insensitive comments claiming the original founder and her work were unimportant. You see, to these conservatives, Owens's actions were justified because she was, quote, leading black people off the Democrat plantation, end quote. In other words, it's OK for conservative leaders to, be, to use leftist leftist tactics as long as those leaders get more republican votes Travis, you're wrong for that you're wrong for that. <laughs> candace stole bcv and made it bcvc man listen <laughs> uh 
These conservatives didn't care a lick about the legal impact Owen's infringement had on the original founder and her amazing work. And this baffled me. For, for a few days, I entertained my critics as much as possible. And before long, people realized I wasn't going to budge in my statement to disassociate myself from Owens. The virtual ministry moved forward. And over time, more people became privy to Owens' behavior. After expressing separation from Owens, I made a statement in one of my videos that my hope was that she would make things right, that she would do the right thing and apologize for the mishap. I wanted to so desperately to continue supporting her because she quickly became the face and to some people, the goddess of the black conservative movement. But she didn't. In fact, she rallied a number of black conservative male influencers to stand by her and promote her blessing. These same influencers who began their platform by speaking about morality, godliness and the lies of the left were suddenly speaking a message that she wanted. It was as if these conservative leaders abandoned their moral integrity and anyone who spoke about this was treated with contempt. I will let you read some of the comments from those who were verbally attacked by Owens and her team, but they want to remain anonymous. Personally, I have the utmost respect for flawed leaders who display humility when necessary. I love such leaders because they apologize when they've done wrong and have hurt others. I love that because it means they have a level of personal integrity that I can respect. But this isn't so with Candace Owens. She admits no wrong. She gets the backing from well-known black conservative influencers. And she continues to be the face of black conservatism, a movement that is supposed to uplift black Americans, a movement that is supposed to be grounded in Christian values. What happened to our sense of compassion, our commitment to integrity, and our willingness to be leaders who set strong examples for others to follow? Is this what conservatism has become? Because if so, I want nothing to do with it anymore. I can't tell you the number of times I've been told this by the same people who have called my prophetic warnings and teachings accurate, yet resort to such low standards of me simply because I spoke against Candace Owens's actions. You see, as long as I deliver a message that appeals to them, like the left is pure evil while the right is God's chosen, then conservatives love me let me read this statement that they made to her it said felicia you're being jealous and unforgiving but when i see that our side has made a great error and i call that out i'm considered a wolf in sheep's clothing a rhino a jealous woman who never who who was never conservative to begin with I am told that I'm unforgiving, that I should never say anything wrong about Owens because she is being used by God. Forget all the cruel things she says and does to people. All that matters to some of these Christian conservatives is that Owens is leading black people away from the plantation. Let me reiterate this point. I love flawed leaders who exercise humility. I love people who are flawed and recognize their need for a savior, a healer, a deliverer. I love such individuals because they display a leadership trait that most folks do not value, humility. For me, the greatest leaders are those who have made the worst mistakes, repented of them, made things right with the Lord, and then came back with an anointing stronger than ever. This is one of the reasons why prison ministry is so important to me, because some of the great, greatest minds and most intellectual people will be the ones who have been forgiven of much. But what do we do with leaders who neither apologize or neither, excuse me, acknowledge their error of their ways? What do we do with these who believe they can trample over people with little to no regard of the moral standards we claim to hold as conservatives? I will tell you what one what I, I will tell you what some conservatives demand of us. They will say, fall in line and stop causing division. This is what some people have done to individuals like Senator Tim, Tim Scott, who just weeks ago called out Representative Steve King for making a passively racist remark about the positive nature of white nationalism and white supremacy. Scott was also attacked by some conservatives for re rejecting the appointment of Thomas Farr as a federal judge because of Farr's record on racial issues. Scott, like me and other black conservatives, was accused of causing division in the, in, in the base for his strong stand against the racist, racist ideologies that are present among some conservative politicians. You see, for the base, as long as black conservatives point out all the blatant racism of the left and the Democrats 
we are loved. But the second we point out the passive and sometimes overtly rhetoric and actions of those on the right, we are accused of partaking in leftist smear campaigns. And the statement that Candace Owens had made about, about Hitler and Germany. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine, end quote, Candace Owens. And she gave uh, elucidation, Candace did, in, in a hearing, I believe, uh, in that. But what this writer is talking about, the context and, and, and how unnecessary it was and, and why she would say that to a people that were um, sensitive to, to that, to Hitler. In England, during the launch of the Turning Point UK, Owens made a remark about her interpretation of nationalism. Quote, whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, at least in America, is Hitler. He was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is that he wanted and he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. To me, that's not nationalism. Let me be clear that any reference to Hitler in any seemingly passive or positive way should give cause to anyone listening to such rhetoric. But let me also add that Candace Owens is not stupid. She's very smart and savvy. She is attractive and appealing. She is a master salesman and marketer. She knows the power of words and she uses them to get people to do what she wants, no matter what. And when she made such comments to an all white audience, she knew she was addressing some people who have a passive, almost nostalgic ideal of Hitler. Owens would never make such a speech to a body of Jews or homosexuals or black Americans. She would never dare to make such a ridiculous statement to people who know firsthand the horrors of racial animosity. But she knew she could make such statements or remarks, excuse me, to a particular audience who are and have been frustrated with the influx of different kinds of people within their country. What's worse is that she got a pass for her statement because she is a black woman espousing those views. Again, Owens is not an idiot. She is a sharp saleswoman and marketer. And she has come to represent what it means to be a black conservative to a mainstream audience. This poses a significant problem to those of us trying to prove to others that conservatives are not racist and are not sympathetic to racist ideology. Pandering to white nationalists and white supremacists is the downfall of the Republican Party. When would conservatives call this out? The challenge of being a Christian and conservative, a mouthpiece and a daughter of God is that I am often asked to deliver a message that will not always sit well with my audience. I'm often compelled to challenge us to consider our ways. I'm often put in an uncomfortable positions where I must draw a line in the sand and ask, are we going to do things the Lord's way or not? This represents a challenge to me because I'm dealing with a group of people who strongly believe all Republicans are on God's side and all Democrats are of the devil. Lastly, I've been conducting teachings that have asked believers to consider whether they would vote for a candidate who holds conservative views, is a strong believer, and a spirit-led individual, yet for the sake of winning an election, will run on a Democratic platform. Surprisingly, nearly 58% of the believers I polled said no. They would not vote for such a candidate simply because he or she ran on a Democrat platform. Then I asked, I then asked, if God can use Donald Trump, who was a Democrat, just seconds before running for office, why can't God use someone else who is a Democrat just so that person can win and execute his will in, in this nation? Now, I personally have no idea why such questions and teachings have arose, but I can tell you that the Lord is confounding our own earthly wisdom so that he, we can come to a place where we are looking to him for total guidance. God is more is far more concerned with our treatment of one another, especially within the body of Christ, than he is about our outward expressions of worship. Abba is very concerned because we have replaced our love for one another in exchange for party affiliations that neither save nor deliver. He is looking to his child, the bride of Christ, to call evil what he calls evil, to defend the helpless, and to cry aloud when injustices are present in the land. He has not given us permission to be selective in which injustices we will call out, especially when they are based on party affiliations. In other words, he didn't tell Christians to call out atrocities of abortion on the left while simultaneously ignoring the racist, the racist ideologies of those on the right. Naturally, 
This doesn't mean that all Democrats support abortion or that all Republicans are racist. I'm simply making a point. He didn't give us permission to point out the speck of the in the left's eye while ignoring the huge beam in ours. He gave us a set of standards, principles, and guidelines to follow for the purpose of establishing powerful relationships with people. Why? Because he values how we treat one another above anything else. Our obedience to his ways is what will make the difference in our nation. And if we sin, he has given us a pathway of repentance that calls for forgiveness and healing. This is what Christian conservatives ought to promote and live by. Not this secular ideology that assumes we can be cruel to others, mistreat others, and lie on others as long as we continue to be Trump supporters. That kind of logic is for the birds, and I want nothing to do with it. Says black conservatives are done with passive ra racism on the right, but how will this affect Donald Trump's presidency in 2020? And I got to speed through this because I got to pick my daughter up from her homecoming dance. <laughs> Um, in 2016, I made a public declaration that I was in support of, of Donald Trump. And I had watched as mainstream media demolished his image by readily referring to him as a racist man. I had seen his willingness to take on the establishment for the betterment of Americans. And I had come to love his devotion to his country and conservatives who, fell, who felt like our rights were being threatened by democratic policies. But since his overwhelming support, of support for people like Candace Owens, I've come to question his judgment with those surrounding him. I have no doubt that God can and will continue to use him if he remains humble before the Lord. Yet, if he continues to promote individuals like Owens, I admit that I may refrain from advocating for him if he's not willing to crush the passive racist rhetoric that comes from the conservative base. Let me reiterate here. I love President Trump in the same way I love people. But if he is unwilling to denounce such talk, I cannot, in good faith, bring his movement and message to our communities, which the conservative base claims it wants to help. I will say that I have been preaching for weeks now. I will stand by a believer who espouses conservative values like the right to life for the unborn, whether that person is a Democrat or a Republican. I'm not beholden to anyone or any party, and I vote based on my conservative conscience. And I'm personally concerned with policies that work for our most marginalized communities, not just now, by decades, but by decades from now. And while I strongly believe the Democrat Party holds a political monopoly on black voters and this is and this stronghold should be broken. I'm not willing to preach a message that manipulates people to leave one political plantation for another. I'm independent in my policy, in my politics. I am a believer. I'm an American who values people, whether I agree with folks or not. I believe in integrity. I believe in treating others as I want to be treated. I believe in spiritual values that include caring for the weak, defending the helpless, and standing for justice. I believe in the Holy Spirit and our need to be dependent on him throughout this movement. I believe in supporting people who have a heart, true heart for others, not selfish folks who care for no one. To some, these ideals may seem too far-fetched. But these are the conservative Christian values I was raised in. Yet today, this entire conservative movement has taken on a different face, one that I will no longer support unless true believers are willing to take a stand. As of today and in 2020, President Trump, just like other candidates, will have to earn my vote. This is the same message I would teach and preach to our communities. Not only am I looking for him to continue implementing policy that work in the best interest of our nation, but I'm looking to see whether he and other Republicans will openly denounce the passive racism found among its party members. I will not tell them to vote Republican just because. I will work to make the political discourse equitable and fair, presenting facts and data from both sides and giving people the opportunity to make wise decisions based on their spiritual convictions. I am not beholden to anyone's message except that which the Holy Spirit gives to me. And when my time is done, when I have completed this mission and assignment, I will step aside and make way for God's Mordecai's to assume their rightful positions. I am kingdom minded. I do what I see this Holy Spirit do. I speak what he tells me to speak. And I invite others to walk in a similar, if not greater relationship with him. So they are not so they are never led astray. I realize this post and my future commentary will be turned off to many within my audience, but I'm confident that I will show other people that there are conservatives who will not stand for the passive racism that currently circulates among our base. 
Either we are on the Lord's side or we are not. Either we believe in him or believe we believe in truth and justice or we don't. Either we can we can call out the sins of the left and speak nothing of the errors of the right. We can't call out the sins of the left and speak nothing of the errors on the right. Either we're going to do things God's way or we won't. The choice is up to us. Whose side will you be on? And again, this is Felicia Killings and her report. And I'm done. I'll put the link in the comments. Uh, I think I'll do this now. In case y'all wanted to read this and have a copy for yourself. And put it there. That's the link there. And y'all can check it out. All right. I got to go. Got a kid to pick up. And got to get out of here. All right. Um, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Uh, I will put this on another, on another uh, stream as well. Uh, another platform later on. Uh, appreciate that, Ashley. Appreciate that. Yeah. So anyway, you guys have a great uh, evening. Again, just wanted to put this information out here. Thank you all for the support. Again, you want to support the ministry of finance, you can do that through the donation information below uh, as well. Uh, that's my time. I uh, thank you all so much for yours. And y'all know the drill. Whatever you do, do all to the glory and out of God. still here? It's over. Go home. Go.